Never forget, you know, when I walked into the church that day, those people were so loving and they were so kind, but they didn't know that I had survived two suicide attempts. Like they didn't know that at nine years old, I tried to take my life and at 11, I tried to take my life again because of just all the dysfunction and the trauma and feeling like I didn't matter. And um, dysfunction was your loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, that's why we have to be so careful yeah. to not hurt people. That person is obviously angry because there's something going yes. on in their life. Yeah. I finished yeah. speaking at a women's event last year. And I noticed there was one gentleman in the audience, and I thought maybe he was the pastor, just you know, kind of listening and make sure I wasn't going to go whack you on the field. So funny, it's the best. But at the end, he had stayed over and in one area, and when almost everyone else had gone, he came over and he turned his face toward me for the first time, and I saw that half of his face was gone. Oh. And and I asked him what his story was, and he said when he was 15 years old, he put a gun underneath mm. his, and in that millisecond between when the bullet left the chamber and entered his skull, he heard Jesus say, do you want to live? Hmm. And he said, yes. Wow. And he's now married with three beautiful daughters. And I said to him, when you see your reflection in the mirror, is it a reminder of that devastating day? Mm -hmm. And he said, no, it's a daily reminder wow. of the grace of God. <laughs> yes. And that's why I think we tell each other our stories. Yeah. yeah. Because so many women think I'm the only one. And that's when the healing can begin is when we acknowledge it and share it because yes. you never know what you are walking through. Yeah. I don't know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through. We have to share yeah. and bear each other's burdens and walk together. You know, it's where it says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two verses further on, it said, each man must carry his yes. own load. Yeah. And I thought, yes. explain that to me, Lord. Burdens I was just reading that. It's the word used in Greek for a ship's yeah. load. Uh -huh. So it means there's some things that you walk through that are too much to carry by yeah. yourself. That's yeah. good. And then the word that's used for carry your own load is what Christ has designed us all mm -hmm. to carry. Yeah. But there's situations in life where you're like, I can't carry this by yeah. myself. Yeah. yeah. And that's when we move in yeah. to one another's lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I often ask women in conference, okay, I want you to imagine this. When you walk through these doors, suddenly all your baggage became visible. Mm -hmm. And you have to drag it to your Ren. seat. Yeah. <laughs> He said run. <laughs> and I say, I'm not talking about your pillow and your snacks. Right. I'm talking about the stuff you've buried yeah. from yeah. childhood. Yeah. But true. then I say, if you saw it, would you want to take a home? Or would you want to take Christ up on that glorious offer mm. at the end of Matthew 11, the last two verses? Mm. Come unto me, yes. all who are weary and heavy laden, yes. and I will give you rest. You know, going back to this idea of people not knowing what you're carrying, um, you know, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Like, I didn't hear Jesus, God, Bible, church, any of that until I was invited to church when I was 11 by my wow. classmate in the sixth grade. Um, and I, I'll never forget, you know, when I walked into the church that day, those people were so loving and they were so kind, but they didn't know that I had survived two suicide attempts. Like they didn't know that at nine years old, I tried to take my life and at 11, I tried to take my life again because of just all the dysfunction and the trauma and feeling like I didn't matter. And um, dysfunction was your news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, that's why we have to be so careful yeah. to not hurt people yes. right? because you just don't know. You don't yeah. know. It's like, you know, we get into situations with somebody who's rude to us. Right. Yes. And, and, you know, our first instinct is to be like, wait a minute, let yeah. me tell you <laughs> yeah. who I am. Yeah. But then we have to take a step back and be like, yeah. you know what? That person is obviously yeah. angry because there's something going yes. on in their life. Yeah. And it's like, how can I be a blessing to them? And I've always compared those, they're like deep contrast. It's like, they have everything, but they're bitter. And this person has nothing, but they're so much better. And I've often seen the case of that in life when we are working through healing. We've seen people walk through divorce. We've seen, you know, even in my own life, people walk through some serious scenarios and yet they have overcome and they have a great way at looking at life. My encouragement for all of you is like when we're, when we're walking through life, it's to just focus on being better. Focus on walking away with something that is, that's worth more than becoming the person that you despise the most. Like we all, we've met them, we've heard their conversations. It's like, you wanna go and take a shower because they're so negative, you know? It's like, do I wanna be that? And I think for me, if I can be quite honest, there was a point in my life that I was so negative. I was hard, I was hard on myself. My kids were small. Um, 
you know, my relationship with my husband, it was, it was getting tense as the years went on because stuff that I did not resolve. And I kept blaming other people instead of looking at me, instead of looking at the person in the mirror and actually noticing, you know what, you're the common denominator in this whole scenario and you are your own worst enemy. So my encouragement to you is just get better, get healing, you know, fight for it. You know, you don't have a, a right to, to be negative and unforgiving, but you do have a right to healing. And so that's, that's what I aim for. Now I've, I feel better, I look better. I, you know, like I have less wrinkles, thank you Jesus, you know, and I don't need Botox, hallelujah, all right? But, but it's the attitude of looking at life with, with the glass, you know, full instead of the glass empty. It's having a better attitude and working through tense situations and walking away with a, with a better outcome. It's hard because, you know, when we're nursing our own trauma, yeah. the first thing we want to do is lash out. Yeah. And we don't have tolerance, we don't have patience, but that's what the love of God is. And I mean, I think about when Jesus hung on that cross, think about this, in all of his pain, in all of his, his trauma, before he died, he forgave two people who were hanging next to him. Mm, I know. I mean, imagine that. Yeah. Like, you you have enough love. To walk in that kind of forgiveness. Yeah. It's incredible to I mean, me. we get ticked off at the person who ran the red light. Yeah. And like, what are you doing? Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> and she cuts us off. What are you doing? It's like, what? I mean, what, what manner mean? of love yeah. is that? And so to me, that's the power of redemption. It's like, you yeah. don't know what somebody is carrying, yeah. Yeah. but you love them anyway. The truth about pain is that, you know, it, it especially when it causes bitterness, um, it begins to seep into every area of our life. Um, I've experienced situations where bitterness uh, created a lack of joy in my life. And as a result, good things would happen, but I couldn't enjoy them. Um, I couldn't actually experience them because the bitterness had seeped into every area of my life. Um, it doesn't stay localized. Resentment does not stay localized. This is why we have to let it go. This is why we have to forgive. Um, I often think of bitterness as drinking poison and expecting it to kill the other person. It ends up hurting you. And so you really do have to let it go or else the beauty that God puts right in front of your eyes will be missed because the lens that you're filtering it through is the pain of your past. God always gives us that chance, mm -hmm. that moment, that blink, yes, <laughs> that thought, yeah. and it gives us a choice. Yeah, He does. Of how to respond or how to react, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, to everything we go through. But I love how you framed that. It's, we're so quick to ask somebody, what's wrong with you? Like, yeah. what, what's wrong with you? It's not what's wrong with you. It's what happened to you. Yeah. Oh, that what is What happened to yeah. you what to happened? make you Where act you? that way? Who yeah. hurt you? And I think we're so quick to be like, oh, just cutting people off yeah. and yeah. blocking people and don't call me anymore. <laughs> Yeah, like so true. Unfollow. Yes. Yeah, unfollow. <laughs> but it's like, man, something happened. I love the idea of being a conduit of grace because we are truly the incarnation of God's grace on this earth. Yeah. yeah. So how can we extend that to people that hurt us? I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.